speaking of believing, Coach Dutch came on talking about a little revenge uh, against Colorado State, and that's exactly what the Aztecs delivered last night. Join us right now, assistant coach Chris Acker. Coach, we always appreciate you joining us here. So ultimately, what was the difference in this game as opposed to what happened on Saturday, other than the obvious that you won the game instead of losing? But what were some of the adjustments you made to come out with a W last night? Well, first of all, thank you guys for having me on. Um, you know, some of the adjustments me, we made uh, really was just to come out and, you know, ha- have a great start and have a great ending, try to make winning plays. That was our biggest adjustment. Um, we tried to make winning plays the entire game. So whether that be uh, us blocking out and trying to come up with loose balls, um, the loose ball Terrell Gomez came up with at the end of the first half, or, you know, being in our gaps defensively, um, just little minute details that, that we missed out on uh, the game before. Coach, 11 or 12 minutes left in the game. Colorado State's on another 14-0 run. Seems like they got like six of them over this past two games. But then uh, Nathan Mensa gets a great block shot. Matt Mitchell makes a nice little jumper. And then Jordan Shackle just lights the whole gym on fire. How nice was it to see your leaders, your seniors, respond after Colorado State started to put it on you again? Well, that's the expectation. You know, Colorado State's a good team. They have really good players. And even though they're somewhat young, they have a lot of experience. Those guys played together last year, and they understand their system. So, for us, we knew, you know, they weren't going to be any different this next game. They weren't going to let up because they won the first one. Um, and, and it was just really good to see our seniors come out there and, and our upperclassmen, like Nathan, come out there and block shots and make plays to help us win the game. Coach, uh, first, I just want to say this. What is it about, and it hit me last night, what is it about 26-0 with you guys? 26-0 last season at one point, 26-point lead Saturday, and a 26-point lead at halftime yesterday. I was just like, what is it about that number? It's very significant. But my question to you was, it's the first time I had heard uh, Brian Dutcher uh, say that the, the mindset from Saturday's game to last night game was to take it, like an NBA team. I'm curious to the response from the team and how they looked at it. I mean, on paper, they win last night, but when that message is given to them, what's their response uh, to that? Well, I think that's one of the strengths of playing for Coach Dutcher is uh, he has that mentality. You know, all the years he's coached uh, collegiate basketball, he understands that, you know, you, you can't dwell. You can't sit there and, feel sorry for yourself because you lost the game, especially with such a quick turnaround. And so, you know, he sent that message to the to the team, which resonated through the entire staff. And just, you know, we changed our mindset immediately and just started preparing. I mean, you know, one of the things we try to do is not change up from whether, whether or not we win a game or lose a game. We want to stay the same. We want to continue to try to get better throughout the course of the season. And, you know, unfortunately for us, we had to learn through losing how we needed to perform in certain situations. And so we, we're just hoping that we're never in that situation again. But, yeah, for us it was it was uh, short memory, get to the next game and try to perform and, and win the next one. We talked about this before, Coach, uh, the difference without a Malachi Flynn, someone that you, know, you could pretty much count on to deliver when you need him the most. This has been a team that has sort of shared the wealth, so to speak, and if somebody is being shut down, somebody else can step back. But – that can be dangerous at times. I mean, we saw Shackle last night obviously go off. We've seen him go off. We've seen Mitchell go off. We've seen Mensa have double doubles out there. But are you still anxious about finding a certain level of consistency with these players game in, game out? Well, I think it just comes down to helping them understand on a day-to-day basis that you have to be the best version of yourself every single game and let the game dictate the outcome. We don't have to force anything. Um, we have a lot of weapons. And so sometimes when you don't have a guy like Malachi, you tend to try to do things that are uncharacteristic of you, and you try to make winning plays by yourself. And, you know, I think our guys, you know, are starting to gel and starting to understand that, you know, by committee we are really, really good. And individually we have a lot of talent, but that talent, um, you know, as, as, as we continue to mold it and put it together – it'll showcase itself and the outcome will still be wins. We don't need an individual guy to take it upon himself to win games. We just need guys to make the right play. And that's what you saw last night, guys willing to sacrifice and make the right play. Coach Chris Acker joining us here on the morning show. Coach, 
I have heard a rumor that Jordan Shackle and Matt Mitchell addressed the team after Saturday's loss on uh, Monday, was it? Or Saturday? When when did they address the team? Do you know? Um, no, I mean, you know, I, I heard a rumor as well. I, I tried, you know, we want to be a, pro, a player-led team. So, you know, those guys have been here for a very long time, and they understand the dynamics of this program. They understand the dynamics of this city. And, and what it entails and what it means and the responsibility they have to go out there and perform on a night-to-night basis. So, you know, I'm just proud of the veteran leadership we had and thankful that we have a group that could come out and perform um, the second game. Because normally, as you know, you know, you play well at the first game and you get off to a fast start. It's hard to come out there and get off to a fast start a second game if you're still dwelling on what happened the last game. So just credit to those guys for coming out there and setting tone. Coach, uh, speaking of Matt Mitchell, the uh, I know uh, Fletch alluded to this. Uh, when the Rams went on that 14-0 run in the second half, you guys dominated for the most part in those first half numbers, leading by 26, as mentioned before. And then the Rams come out for that 14-0 run. I know as a viewer and a fan, when you see Matt Mitchell or anybody laying a shot to sort of put uh, stop that momentum, as a coach, do you feel the same, or is it just sort of business as usual? You just have that coach's mentality. Well, no, you definitely, you know, appreciative of the fact that he he uh, he found a spot where he could make a basket because you know that was a huge elbow jump shot that he took and made, um, and we were kind of in disarray with what we were doing offensively, and and you know he stepped up and made a huge stop to, uh, shot to stop the run. So, again, I mean, that's why you have veterans on your roster. He was one of the calming voices in the huddle that just said, guys, we got to play better. Like, we're not getting stops. We, we, we got to do things the way that we practice. And so when you hear your veterans guys do say that and then they come out there and they actually get it done, then you know you're on to something special. So, again, I'm just really pl- proud of Matt, Jordan, uh, Nathan, and A.G., uh, who, who played through a little stomach deal and everything. So it, it, it was it was good to see. All right, so now we went from 11 days off between games to four games in eight days. Uh, now you play Thursday against Nevada Saturday as well. So we've talked about this bizarre schedule uh, that you guys have had to keep up with. So from famine to feast, how exactly do you handle this load and what's the preparation now getting ready for Nevada? Well, first and foremost, I, I think our guys are tired of hearing our voices in practice. So. <laughs> I know they're excited about getting out there and playing games. So, you know, for us, we got guys that love the game and love to play. So, you know, they're they're just excited to be able to play games, um, you know, less practice, less preparation, and just get after it. Um, Nevada's going to pose their own challenges, and, you know, we're studying film right now and trying to get familiar with them so that we can present a great game plan to our team. Um, but, again, no matter what the climate is or what the situation is, having a veteran group is, is really, really important. Um, with the chaotic schedule like it is right now. So I think this is a group that's prepared for anything, and they're excited to get out there. All right, Nevada, Thursday, Saturday out of Viejas. Coach, we always appreciate the time. We'll talk to you down the road. Thanks so much. I look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. Chris Hacker joining us right there.